Well, we've seen a lot of movement in the price of oil. It was actually trending higher earlier in light of some uh, more tensions in the Middle East before pulling back, now down more than 1% in the session. Uh, certainly a couple of factors that the market was watching. You had this uh, attack um, that killed U.S. troops in Jordan, which uh, the U.S. said was backed by Iran. Uh, Iran denied a role in that. There was separately a uh, fuel tanker in the Red Sea uh, that was attacked, and obviously uh, investors have been trying to figure out the supply story throughout all of these developing uh, pieces of geopolitical uncertainty. I want to get some more perspective on how the energy sector is watching it very specifically. Randy Olenberger is Managing Director of Oil and Gas Equity Research at BMO Capital Markets, and he joins us here in the studio. It's nice to see you, Randy. Good to see you. Uh, I mean, it has been a, a very uh, a time of great tension. Um, how do you make sense of the headlines right now? Yeah, you know, the market is still focused on the demand side of the equation, more so than the supply side of the equation. I think that's really what's driving the oil price down a little bit this morning, because there is some risk. I just don't think the risk is being priced into the oil market right now. Yeah, so um, the sort of bigger story this year is, um, you know, like s s certain leading energy um, uh, watchers suggesting there's enough supply in the marketplace, and that kind of won over the, the lingering uncertainty around threats to supply, essentially? Yeah, I think so. You know, so last year, supplies surprised to the upside. We had more production out of the United States, but importantly, more out of Iran. And I think that's one of the things that maybe the market's missing right now, is it's not just about disrupting shipments out of the Middle East. It's about sanctions being reapplied against Iran, which kind of sneakily increased production by about 800,000 barrels a day over the last two years. So if Europe and the U.S. starts to reapply those sanctions, there will be less supply in the market, even without an escalation in hostilities. Do you think it's, it's interesting because everybody's trying to figure out what the U.S. response is to this. There's a lot of pressure on Joe Biden, but this is a very tricky situation, which, uh, you know, uh, they have, especially with the uh, fighting tied specifically to what's happening in the Red Sea, they have been trying to keep an awful lot of yeah. distance from tying it back to, to the situation between Israel and Hamas. Um, does sanctions maybe play a play a role in, in what happens from here. It, it could. And again, I mean, I say there are sanctions in place that have been ignored. And I think, you know, that's largely for political reasons. The U.S. has been trying to keep oil prices and gasoline prices low. So the question is, will they reapply those sanctions and potentially see prices at the pump move higher in an election year? OK, so when you think of, when you get asked what's going to happen to oil, you, you have to factor in these yeah. these considerations. But generally, what's what's the trend look like, in your opinion, as we roll through the year? Yeah, I think it looks a little bit sloppy over the first part of the year here. Demand is weak. There's no doubt about it. Demand is weak. Gasoline demand is down. But we do think demand will start to improve. Everybody expects demand to grow year over year. Uh, and so the market will tighten up over the course of the year. We don't see as much supply coming to the market this year as we saw last year. So we think it will be a year that ends on a tighter note than last year did. And, um, you know, you hear about the uncertainty for the economy. So the, 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 the demand part, is that what is the driver for demand? It's, it's basically non-OECD demand growth, and that's largely population growth and, in part, economic growth. And so the ongoing growth in just sort of industrializing non-OECD economies, that's really what drives oil demand growth. And so ultimately, you think that's a, a, a general positive for Canada's energy sector? I do. I mean, higher oil prices are obviously great for Canada's energy sector. Uh, and obviously, you know, we're about to be able to export more oil as well. So there's a lot of positives building up for Canadians, uh, Canada's energy sector. Yeah. And uh, I want to talk after the break about uh, Trans Mountain specifically. Um, but, um, you know, this is the, geopolitically the the lingering uncertainty in the Middle East is something that everybody is watching this year. Um, what are, you know, as, you, as you're continuing to watch the headlines unfold there, uh, as an energy watcher, what are some of the things that others should watch for to, to determine if there's really um, uh, notable supply demand uh, factors to consider? Yeah, so I mean, as I said, the main thing probably is, does the U.S. reapply those sanctions against Iran? And so we start to see Iranian production come back down again. So the risk there is maybe we lose 600,000 barrels a day of Iranian production. Um, if hostilities escalate, I mean, it's not good for anyone. I mean, there's 20 million barrels a day of oil that moves to the Strait of Hormuz. That would be at risk if uh, hostilities escalated. And so then we'd be talking about a substantial spike in prices, which isn't great for the economy. Okay.